Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video I want to show you an interesting optimization technique related to time intelligence calculations. And we are going to use specifically direct query. The reason is that the query is much slower than Vertipack. Therefore, optimizing your DAX code in direct query is extremely important. We're going to say that if you use time intelligence calculation, like same period last year, the calculation happens at the date level rather than at the month level as our query will require. That generates a slower query, and in order to optimize it, we need to write the DAX code in a different way, avoiding time intelligence calculation and writing the DAX code by hand. This is just one of the many, many examples we have in the optimizing DAX training. So if you find the content interesting, make sure to take a look at uh, that training because uh, you will find a lot more interesting examples about optimizing code. Anyway, with no further ado, let's start looking at the demo. We start looking at the query, we measure performance, and then we start changing it in order to make it faster. The query retrieves uh, for each year month uh, the growth as a percentage between the current month and the same month in the previous year. So, from the DAX point of view, we have a measure defined inside the query, which is sales in the previous year, that uses calculate to compute the sales amount, but then it uses same periods last year to shift the current selection of one month one year ago. And then the values are used in summarized column. We are grouping by year month and by year month number for the sort order. And we are dividing the growth as a dollar value, that is the sales amount minus the sales in the previous year. And we divide this value by the sales in the previous year to transform it into a percentage. And finally, we order the values. We can run the query to start measure the time needed to execute. We have the result that contains by year month the growth in percentage, but we are not interested in the result. We are interested in the timing. It took 3.3 seconds to execute the code. Let's take a look at the details of the storage engine queries, which, because we are using that query, are of course SQL queries. The first small queries are rather simple, but they are already interesting because the first one, which is the second, but it's the first one we analyze, retrieves from the date table all the individual dates. Now, if we look at the content of the query, we are not grouping by day. We are grouping by year month and year month number. So why does the engine need to have the individual dates? The reason is same period last year. As any time intelligence calculation, same period last year works at the individual day level. Anyway, the first query we analyze retrieves the date. The second query is uh, also interesting because that retrieves uh, the date, the year month, and the year month number. So it is retrieving the relationship between uh, year month number, the month, and the individual dates in order to understand which dates compose each month. The information is not known to uh, analysis services. It needs to retrieve that from the data. Then we have a first query that retrieves uh, uh, groups by year month and year month number, and it computes the sum of A0, where A0 is nothing but the sales amount computed by the subquery. The query is rather small, there's nothing complex here, uh, because it just retrieves data at the granularity required by the query, year month and year month number. The most interesting query is the last one, because uh, it's a very long query. You see that it took a while between when I clicked on it and when I have seen the result, because it's a very long query. We probably need a bit more real estate to analyze it. First of all, let's take a look at the length. It's a very long query that contains uh, a gigantic uh, uh, static table created directly inside the query. And the query is grouping by C20 and C22. C20 here and C22. And then it's computing the sum of A0, where A0 is still the sales amount. We have this uh, subquery, but the most interesting part is uh, here, where actually 
C20 and C22 are defined. You see, C20 is here, C22 is here. What is the content of this static uh, table created inside the query? Well, it contains uh, the month, January 2011, and then the dates that need to be scanned in order to compute the value for that month. It is interesting to look at this query because it's very, very smart. In order to reduce the amount of data that needs to be exchanged between SQL Server and uh, Tabula, the engine creates uh, this query, and it's interesting to note that uh, even though we have January, we have January 2011 here, the data that is related to January 2011 is a date in 2010, in January 2010. Not only we have the first date, but for January 2011 we have all the dates in January for 2010. So what the engine did was to scan the date table, it retrieved the relationship between month and dates, and then it executed same period last, same period last year uh, in the formula engine in order to create a SQL query that lets SQL group by January 2011 using dates that happen to be in 2010. That's nothing bad, and by the way, this query is really smart because it let the engine group at the month level rather than at the day level. The problem is it's a very long query. It contains a lot of code, a lot of text code that needs to be exchanged back and forth between the server, it needs to be parsed, executed, and then uh, produces the result. So despite being very smart, it is not very fast. Before we move further and we try to optimize it, let me save the time needed to execute this query. It's 3.3 seconds, the total execution time, which is the only value we are interested in when working with direct query. If we were to optimize the code, we need to find a way to force both the internal calculation of SQL and the result not to happen at the date level, but to happen at the month level. Unfortunately, this cannot be done if we use time intelligence calculations, because time intelligence calculations are very smart, very easy to use, but they always work at the day level. If we want to force the calculation at the month level, we need to use our own columns and we need to write the code without using time intelligence calculations. To do that, we need a helper column. We need a column that makes it easy to compute the same period last year. We are no longer going to use same period last year, we are going to use DAX to execute the same code the same period last year. And it happens that the year-month column, as we designed, is just perfect for this scenario. Let me show you how uh, the year-month number column is being stored in my table. I have this Power BI report that shows uh, the year, the month number, the month, just as a reference, and then the year-month number. Year-month number is nothing but a number that has the peculiarity that it grows by one every month. In my example, I computed it by taking the year, multiply it by 12, and then add the month number. The good thing about the column created this way is that I can perform math on the column. If I have a month selected, it is enough to subtract 12 from that month to obtain the same month but a year ago. And we can take a look at that. Let me zoom in a bit less. Okay, this way. Look at January 2011, for example. The value of year month number in January 2011 is 24133. If I subtract 12 from 133, I obtain 121, which happened to be the year month number of January 2010. So, by using simple mathematical operations, I can move back and forth over time. And I can use it not only to, co to compute the same period last year, but if I want to go to the previous quarter, for example, I just subtract 3 from the current year month number and I reach the previous quarter. So, I don't have to perform complex calculation with the year and the month. This column con contains in the same number both information, the year and the month. And then, once the column is there, I can just use it in my code. I'm not going to write the code, I have already written it and I prefer to spend time discussing it rather than typing. So let me paste it here. 
Okay. This is the new version of sales previous year. We need to retrieve, first of all, the current selected month. We could use selected value or max or any other aggregation because there will always be only one month selected. And then we compute the sales amount using calculate and we force the new filter on the year month number, saying that I'm interested in the year month number that happens to be the same as the current one minus 12 to go back one year. And then we also need to use these remove filters. That's an operation that same period last year does automatically if the relationship is based on a date. And we have to do that manually because we are replacing same period last year. The good thing is that we are no longer using time intelligence calculation. So I expect this code to be faster. Let's run it to see the time needed to execute it. And uh, we see that it is actually faster. It's 1.9 seconds rather than 3.3. Let me write it down here immediately so I don't forget to do that later. It's 1.9 seconds rather than 3.3, so 1.4 seconds. We saved a lot of time. And if we take a look at the storage engine queries, uh, we see that, first of all, there are five storage engine queries. Now, there are no longer three. The first simple query, uh, we need a bit more real estate. The first simple query retrieves uh, the year month, the year month number, and the, year, and the maximum year month number. This is needed because uh, it needs to retrieve this part, this max executed here, the current month group by year month number. Then we have a second query that just retrieves uh, the year month and the year month number from the date table. And we have the third simple query, which is this one, that just retrieves the year month number from date. You see, we are no longer retrieving the dates. We are not interested in which date compose each individual month. And the reason is we are not using time intelligence calculations. But now let's take a look at the other queries. We have this query that is very close to the one we have seen before. It's uh, retrieving the year month, the year month number, the sales amount from a subquery that scans directly sales. So this query is basically the same that we had before, and it is responsible for computing this part, this sales amount that needs to be computed year by year. But then we also need the sales previous year, which in the previous example was the gigantic query. Here it is much simpler. It is the last query here, again, and a bit more, sta more space, and you see again that it retrieves the year month number and the sum of uh, sales amount. But when we reach uh, the work condition that before was implemented with an inner join with uh, a gigantic static table, in this case, it's just a simpler work condition where we have only the list of the month number. So we reduce by one thirtieth the number of values that needs to be selected. And as a result, the query is much faster. This is not to say that you should not use time intelligence at all. You can use time intelligence, but if you are seeking for top performance, then using your own DAX code gives you better option for optimizing the code. Besides, before leaving the topic, I want to show you that the the very smart optimization of grouping by year month, even though the calculation happens at the day level, does not always kick in. It depends on how complex your DAX code and how good the optimizer is able to is in uh, analyzing your code and making it faster. So in order to show you the effect, I just created a third version of the same code. This time we are no longer using uh, same period last year, we are using dates between. So we compute uh, the boundaries of uh, the same period of last year, and then we use dates between. Again, I'm not going to type the code. I have it already here, and I prefer to spend time discussing that. I need to reduce this. Okay. Here it is. This time, the version of uh, sales in the previous year First, it computes uh, the last visible date in the current filter context. Then it computes uh, the begin and the end of the previous year. The end of the previous year is the end of, end of the current month one year ago. 
So we use uh, last day to retrieve, uh, to know the current date, E of month that returns the end of the month uh, 12 months ago. And this is the end of the current month uh, one year ago. Then we need to compute the beginning of the current month one year ago. And to compute it, we compute uh, the end of 13 months ago plus one. So we have the first of the current month one year ago. All the dates in between these two dates is the set of dates we need to use for our uh, same period last year. So we use dates between, which is again a time intelligence calculation, to compute all the dates between the start and the end of the same period last year. This code, I expect it to be slower than before, not only, but it will always also materialize data at the day level. Let me run the code so we first get an idea about the execution time, and then we look at the storage engine queries to understand what happened there. It takes 2.9 seconds, so it goes back to the same... Oh, that's a bit too much. 2.9 seconds, it goes about to around the same time that it was needed before, and it is much slower than our best option. But the most interesting part is in the storage engine queries. We have several queries. I'm not interested in all of them because they will be very close to the previous one. I'm only interested in the last one that computes the sales of the previous year. And you see that this time we have a bad surprise. This query is no longer grouping by year month, it's grouping by individual dates. So not only the calculation happens at the day level, but also the data set that is returned from SQL to tabular is much larger. It's 30 times larger because it contains one value per data, resulting, of course, in slower code. As you have seen, optimizing time intelligence calculation basically means rewriting time intelligence calculation. Remember that as a human, as a developer, you have a better knowledge about your model. So you can slightly change the model, add the required columns, uh, and make your DAX code faster without relying on time intelligence calculations. This is not to say that you should stop using time intelligence calculation right now. Time intelligence calculations are simple to use, they are powerful, they make the DAX code much easier to author. So if you don't have a huge model, you can rely on time intelligence calculation without having to worry about that. But if your model gets too large, or if you are using direct query, that is a slow storage engine, then the need to optimize uh, starts to happen. And uh, if you're using time intelligence calculation, optimizing them basically means get rid of them add some columns to your model, and then write your own DAX code so to take advantage of the column you created in the model. Enjoy DAX! Mm -hmm.